where I know there's something right, wrong, good, or bad. It can't come from me, where I would just say, today I don't want to do that, if that was all there was. And so what the third is saying is because we know we're looking at the world around us, looking at what's good and bad, what's good and bad is the same even when I don't want to do it. It's still bad to go steal or lie or cheat, even when I feel like stealing or lying or cheating. My reason will tell me these things are bad, even when I feel like doing them. And so they must not come from me, or they would change. I would say well, these things are good because I feel doing them. That's what people are doing now. That's what they're doing. Basically. Yeah. How is that different than instincts, animal instincts? So an animal instinct is, is, it has to do with the purpose and the object. So what, what they would say is that an instinct is a similar thing, but the instinct doesn't have the free will. There's no free will. So an animal instinct is going to react. I'm going to consider, maybe I should fly fly today, maybe I should, should, should fly today. I'm not going to choose to fly that fly, I'm just going to react as they react. You know, uh, uh, possibly going to freeze and, and fall over. It's not going to say, maybe I should today, freeze and fall over. A human being can't. So we're not controlled by our instincts, but the, the the saints, the church fathers, the philosophers look at and say that that's the kind of God's providence and plan that has. Uh, and so the human reason, and the human feeling of right and wrong, natural inside of us, must come from a higher source, or we would we would be able to say, oh yeah, I can choose to go right away. We would say it's not wrong for me to do this because I have changed my mind. So the fact that no one's back and look and say. I did the wrong thing. I feel guilty for doing this. Um, and there are certain things we can't really look right. Um, you know, people who end up doing bad things, it, it changes the way they think about themselves. So what PTSD is, right? Uh, people who end up in wars, even, even if they're for real reasons, who end up knowing there's something wrong. People who are acts murder, people who do certain moral things, they end up feeling that in themselves. Um, even when at the point where I talk to people saying God forgives you, God loves you, and they're afraid to be forgiven, not that they don't God, because they're angry at themselves. Um, it's because they know they can't transgress the natural law, and they've harmed themselves by doing so. And the purpose of this natural law is to lead them the proper end. So what is our right end? What is our goal? We've got that end. So the purpose of this is to be with God. So it comes from God and it's back with God. That's what Neil said. So you, you can prove there is this, this is one way you can prove there is a God, looking at um, the, the fact that the right to God, just looking at right and wrong, you can prove there is a, there is a God. Otherwise, there would be no, nothing they would look at. Questions or comments on that? <laughs> Let's go on then to 46. Romans chapter 2, verse 15. What the law requires written on their hearts. The alleged conflict between freedom and law is forced to be brought up again once again today with regard to the natural law. It can be with regard to nature. Debates about nature and freedom have always marked the history of the moral question. They were especially key at the time of the Renaissance, the Reformation. It can be seen in the teaching of the Council of Trial. So, by nature, what is human nature? What's it mean to be human being? To be changed on? That kind of thing. Um, so this, is, this is obviously a very relevant debate today. It's still running on. What's a human being? What's a man? What's a woman? What's the, what this means? This is very important to do with freedom and law. Obviously. Our own age is marked, though in a different sense, by similar tension. The pension for empirical observation, the procedures of scientific objectification, ecological progress, certain forms of liberalism have led these two terms to be in opposition. It's a, di a dialectic. 
It's not an act of conflict, but that freedom of the nature or characteristic of the structure of human history. And so you'll have, for instance, people who argue for the contraception and will say, yes, nature says so I shouldn't you know, contracept, but I'm free using the technology, I'm set free from the boundaries of my own, the taste of my own nature. Um, so people argue for contraception that way, and they'll say, well, I'm free. So there, there is this two conflict now at the time between nature and free. In other periods, the nature is subjected to man's totally good soul and demands. It's on breaking walls. Today, too, the situation in the world, the senses, the space and time, physical chemical constants, bodily processes, psychological impulses, the forms of conditioning, to many people, only ones who are in the size of that, in reality. In this context, the moral facts, despite their specificity, frequently treated as if they're specifically there without the data. Patterns of behavior which can be subject to some observation or can exclusively in categories psychological processes. In other words, right or wrong, good and bad, the fact that the people do certain sort of actual ways and for guilty over lies, that's just we're just raised up and we're trained that way, that that's just the society helping us, that's just, you know, it's from our genes because of evolutionary traits that were that people will try as an altruism based upon evolution and based upon survival methods, things like that. As a result, some ethicists, professionally engaged in the study of human realities and behavior, can be tempted to take as a standard of their discipline, the influence of the norms, as well as a statistical study of complicated behavior patterns, things that were the of the majority of people. In other words, what they'll say is right and wrong is based upon how most people react to the situation. And so the, the, the statistics play the role of, of arbitrary right and wrong. As long as most people do this, that's what's moving back. As opposed to being a higher law outside of that, guiding us toward our right hand. <laughs> Other more this matter, and they're trying to stress the importance of values, so objective, reactive values, are intensive to dignity and freedom. But they frequently conceive of the freedom of somehow in opposition to or in conflict with its material and relational nature. Which must progress the service. <coughs> Here, various approaches are, are one overlooking the creative imagination, the understanding its integrity. For some, nature becomes reduced to raw material for freedom for human activity and for its power. Thus, they just the family transform, being overcome by freedom, to the much reference of limitation and denial of freedom. We want to destroy our nature, we want to overcome our nature, we want to subject our nature to ourselves, to our wills. For others, it's the untraveled advancement of man's power, of his freedom, economic, cultural, social, immoral values are established. Nature thus comes to mean everything by a man no apart from freedom. In such understanding, nature would include in the first place the human body, its vacant processes. I guess this physical data would be opposed to adverse construction, in other words, culture, so the part can result of it. Human nature, in this way, can be reduced to three values, a readily available biological or social material. It's also what it means to take between themselves to find them, the phenomenon of the creative of the self as values. And even all said and done, man will not have a nature, be your own personal life project. That would be nothing more than his own freedom. Some of these ideas go back to the fourth century. There was a man named Walker who came up with an idea called nominalism. And these ideas are floating around today very much, especially when it comes to moral values, when it comes to something that is about, at least a human being, what a human nature is. What nominalism says basically, I'm, I'm simplifying, obviously, but basically what it's saying is that things, every individual, all that exists are the visions. We call things by certain names. Yeah. <laughs> 
But all of us really do is giving a name to different things that are individually different. It looks, it looks at the individual uh, uh, differences between my phone and your phone, between the little book and my apple. We would say, well, they're really just totally individuals. That's what the Zets in reality are, individual things. And calling them both books, calling them they're the same thing, well, that's a, that's a mistake because they're so individual and different. What's that matter? When it comes to looking at human nature, then, when it, when it, when it, when these ideas would come down to saying, well, we're all the same. Right? I have my nature, I have my freedom, I have my ideas, you have your ideas, you have your nature, you have your individuality. And therefore, when it comes to freedom, when it comes to right and wrong, when it comes to good and bad, it's good for, you. for me, but it's not, it might not be good for you. <laughs> and then we, yeah, so it begins with this idea that now I don't think I don't think he would go that far himself, but this idea that those things. So they'll let that out. I think I, I think he personally would have been a moral man, a good man. But his ideas were were the crazy you, you didn't deny uh, too many things you had to you open up some doors. We see these ideas though still today, relativism, more in mechanism, to get this nominalism for names, what we have. And so, when it comes to moral theology here, John Paul II is saying certain of these moral theologians would say that the way, the, it is similar to this, but really different, they, they would say human nature is just raw data. What I do with that is up to me. And so the fact that I have a body, who cares? What I do with that body is up to me and my freedom. I can use it in various ways. What I do with my ability to create things, well, that's up to my freedom. And so it ends up eroding human nature. If you don't have a human nature, there's no natural law. No natural law, right and wrong, goes back to being up to this. Which accuse of presenting moral laws which are in themselves mere biological laws. In other words, does it say that you shall not steal, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery? Then we say, oh, well, well, that's just what evolution said to help the species of one life. That's not right or wrong, that's just, that's just what we are physically. You can transcend that because now we're free. Now we know better. Now we're smarter. Now we're from the land. Yeah, 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 Consequently, in too superficial a way, a permanent and unchanging character be attributed to a certain kind of human behavior. This is the claim. This is, this, is, this is the objection. On the basis of this, it can be made a form of universally valid human norms. According to certain theologians, this kind of biologistic bi 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 or naturalistic argumentation it can be present in certain documents of the Church of Magisterium. Especially those dealing with the area of sexual or formal ethics. It was then maintained the basis of naturalists to understand the sexual act, a contraception, sterilization, autoeroticism, racial relations, sexuality, etc., etc., condemned morally and accepted. In the opinion of these same theologians, a morally negative and violation of such an act fails to take these opinions in take out of consideration. Both the man's character of action and being, and the close condition of the moral norms. In their view, man, the rational being, only can and actually must be determined the meaning of his behavior. In other words, my, what I'm doing would be the same thing, but I can change the meaning based solely upon my intention or my ideas. Yeah. On you as well. That's yes. Yeah. Oh. Of the meaning. 
it just seems right just because you're born into this world and somebody else is telling you how to how to think about your creator, I guess. Like we already have this system in place before we're born that says this is who he is, get in line, like kind of. And so I can kind of say, I understand this. Because you have to choose for yourself no matter what. You can't just fall in line because everybody else is in line. Like, even if it is for Catholicism. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's, it's taken for a few reasons. But what's inter always interesting to me that people won't find those old ideas in any other area except for morality. Religion, yeah. You know, we became, we became to science. Science, no one would science that had to prove every individual principle. By yourself. By yourself. You're yourself. Reinventing the wheel, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't go anywhere. Um, but, but yes, for several reasons, it, it, it's a very tempting thing, a very tempting argument to say, well, we're, we're sense? not locked into our bodies, our physicality. Uh, locked into the old ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, no, I mean, mm -hmm. if it weren't tempting, one would repeat it. Um, you know, it's, it's, the same, it's the same old, old, old lie, old devil, old art, you know, where he says, Does God really mean that for you? Mm -hmm. God's telling you lies. You'll be more free, you'll be happier, you'll be better at doing these things. And this is a big deal to reinvent by yourself, like, to come up with all this stuff and figure it all out by yourself is hard. You're, you're never going to get there by yourself unless God, like, comes And especially because <laughs> it's an area that's very wounded and very tempting. You know, when it comes to marriage and, you know, to, to, to tell somebody, even, you know, part of my marriage is last sometimes because they made a limited promise. That's it. If you're told you to leave your marriage if you like it because you're bored one day, you've had a better model, or because you're mad at each other, fill the blank. Well, the reason why divorces are part of the roof right now is when people are already married. Right now. If you're told there's nothing right or wrong about sexuality, so just have fun, it's, it's experiment. And people will do that. But they're being miserable, despising themselves, and, and being very depressed. And that's not what we are. Um, but it's very tempting because we want to do these things. And so we've confused the idea of, of constraints being bad because of the fact that I have desires in me. Um, at least we want to say all my desires are good because they're mine. Not taking into account the fact that I can have bad desires you know, for all kinds of things. And so these arguments basically are, are saying, um, don't be constrained tied down to the culture, tied down to your biology, be free. And it's very tempting to find excuses for doing what we want. But any excuse, even when they look good, is still an excuse. They don't make the generation the repercussions all yeah. as far as with all the sexual the stuff and the sexually transmitted diseases. Because mm -hmm. those were minimal yeah, before the pill came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the argument would be they can all be treated now, so it's not. Well, you don't need an excuse to the society. You just do what you want. Varieties of these that are not responding to the antibiotics. Well, then you just wait until they are. Then it's no longer a wrong. Yeah. If the only reason is the consequence, then the problem is the consequence, but not the moral act. Yeah. The consequence is a sign of the problem, right? But it's not the problem. It doesn't matter what it does to other people. Right. Like well, <laughs> if you believe you're an individual, then other people don't matter at all. Yeah. Well, they matter less than you, at least. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Basically, these, these arguments are purely the lowest part of human nature. You know? Um, People are giving up their will, kind of. It's like they're setting their ability to choose something different aside in favor of, like, I'm animalistic, just like, I'm hungry, I'm going to eat this whole thing of ice cream or a liquid. Just, like, out of control, desire. And the problem is, and the great lie is they're being told, if you don't act like an animal, you're being... Act like you make a fool of a slave. Yeah. You don't want to be a slave. Mm -hmm. And so we're given this lie the choice is be a slave or be an animal. 
And there's a, there was a, and fortunately there was a third option. <laughs> it has to be a human being. It's a pretty yeah. Yeah. <laughs> choice. It is. And, and but that, that's the state of, of the moral theology right now. It's the state of all these. How, how much of all this not messing with people's minds? There was a study that came out last year that said that um, I think fifty-one percent of the people who are liberal count. Now I'll be curious to see how it compares to the third count. Because half of those are also liberals. And that's my other question. Um, but over fifty percent of those in the liberal camp have a diagnosable mental disorder. So yes, this is very much messing with people's mental capacity. The reason to be happy to um, I mean. Even just isolating the question of marriage, uh, people are afraid to get married these days because they're afraid it's not going to last. It's not going to last quite long. Well. And they end up then using each other and they end up then treating the relationship um, in such a way where it becomes um, purely selfish and end up being very, very hurt. And, yeah, and that they don't need to be thinking that they're in love with somebody because they're just going to leave it anyway right. or else I'm at it. And so you, you end up down with relationships that are very destructive. This is passed on to children. That this affects their development, it affects their ability to, to uh, accept love, to believe in themselves, to accept the ability to. Um, I mean, they've done studies just purely on economics, that children divorce tend to fare worse economically, just economically. Uh, but it's because of other factors. They don't have stability, they don't have the ability to learn more. Um, all of these things are, are, are very much affecting us as a culture society. But there's a reason, and, the, and if you look at our society right now, there's a reason why we're at the liberal act. Um, yeah. I did hear something this morning that the executive branch has been People who are paying attention and looking at what's around them can say, I don't want this to be my fault, my thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I run several people, by and younger, who will say, I don't want to divorce. I'm not going to marry a divorce. As they're entering into it with the old fashioned concept, because they've seen the last generation of the parents the way it's done. Uh, well, there was an interesting comment I read from an, uh, an atheist, an Irish atheist, um, who's looking at, you know, my grandparents, this is a grandfather came back from World War II, um, an atheist, who was a past all of them, but they were from the He said, you know, what's interesting, I started praying the rosary, they don't believe, but we're missing something, we need this higher power of some kind. Because the, the family they from the past, there was laughter. There's no laughter anymore in the prayers. We're on our phones, we're talking, we're angry, we're so, we're so divided, we're, people gather together and don't laugh. I think, I think, I think people are, are starting in some way, some areas are sort of starting to realize there's something. Um, there's a very liberal uh, talk show host, Joe Rogan, an uh, interesting guy. But he, he said in the last couple weeks, you know, we need Jesus. I don't think he believes in Jesus, but he says, well, they, they, aside without religion, without higher truths, we won't fall apart. And he said, we, we need to have, have these things. This isn't. We've taken it away. We're in a weird now place. we're starting to see what really happens. Well, I think with, with, with weird tension, where people are kind of falling to the opposite extremes. Mm -hmm. Comment or question? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might have went out for now, but. No, a little slower, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't slip sorry, I should just move on. Okay. 
I, I will do my best. Sir. The process of determining the meaning of human behavior would obviously have to take into account the limitations of the human being existing in a body, human nature in general, and in history. Furthermore, it would have to take into consideration the behavioral modes and the meanings to let that require in a given culture. Above all, we would have to respect the fundamental commandment of the love of God and the neighbor. In other words, people who say Catholic, so they'll try to give some constraints, they'll give free life to that one. But, but, but they when they have bad foundational principles that lead to the weird things. So they'll say that unless I'm Catholic, they'll say, I'm not saying everything go, what I'm saying is we take into account love your neighbor, love God, but still they continue, God made man a rational human being. He left him in the power of a council. He expects him to shape his life in a personal, rational way. Now, the neighbor would mean, above all, even exclusively, respect his freedom to make his own decisions. So I see my neighbor wanting, wanting to do drugs, well, that's your, your right, that's your freedom. See my neighbor wanting, wanting to. Fun enough, the circumstances that wouldn't apply to but I don't think I would say about acts, murder, or harm of children, but by the way, other thing else does, because I want to love them and allow them to be free to do what they want to do. Workers of typical human behavior, as well as so called national donations, which so, the, the most established, they say, the orientation for correct behavior, in order to determine the moral assessment in the of human acts to so complex situations. In other words, they would say, is the natural law of saying don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie, don't adultery? Well, these things are maybe a good starting point, but. In my situation, those don't count. Because A, B, and C. Because there's too much other complicated things where you know, I have to love my neighbor because of this one, or whatever it might be. You can maybe you can add some more like that. <laughs> the problem is when we begin with the wrong ordering of human nature, when we start with our desires and our emotions, it's supposed to happen, and by God made things, supposed to be God himself first. Our reason sees and knows who God is and what he's he asked us to do, but to understand that our will chooses that. And then if we weren't a fallen creature, our emotions would come along and would, would, enjoy, would enjoy it. So we would then have joy in filling God's law, joy in doing the right thing, joy in, in peace and happiness in doing these things. That's, that's what God designed. The ritual of sin would happen is unfortunately we feel like something. Uh, oops. <laughs> Feel like something. I have motion towards something. I feel like eating a gallon of ice cream today. I'm happy, but having to stop at the store and get some ice cream. I don't expect it. Flint, you know, you know. What would it be? It's a day, 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 is a break that you had ice cream. <laughs> I feel like doing this. I chew it and it feels good. And then my reason comes along and says, why it's okay. This is often happens. And so because of because this is the this is a disordered thing, often you can make us miserable, who wants to do this? Um, God has left out of the equation. And so the problem with a lot of these moral theologies, these moral theories, is, is they don't take into account our fallen nature. They don't, take, they don't take into account the fact that there is a higher law of us for a reason. So they'll say, I have freedom. But really what they're saying is I feel like doing this. Got to the point that now people even use the word feel when they think. You ever notice this? Yeah. I, I feel like. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Just yes. And people don't want to say it. 
So it will say, if I'm free, I feel this way. And if I feel this way, then you can't say anything because it's like Right. Well, I think the most important part, even though they're changing. Uh, I think mean, we've even read certain people that argue that feelings are made to seem beings. Which is a kind of scary to thought. But he was raised a kid. Knows that you can't do that because as a two year old, that's the feelings are like, that's all they can say. A lot of things are different. <laughs> Well, it all depends on the ability to be helped. I mean, there is a certain point what, where only God can help. Um, well, and this is why, but why John Paul II again. Some of this stuff is, is very simple to us told in not simple ways. But the reason why he's doing this is because he wants to inform our ideas. Because if we can get our ideas straight, we'll begin to understand what, why things will work out for us. Hopefully. Right? And then we've gone to the point where we should stop thinking for only a few. If we can start thinking again, maybe we can start guiding our feelings back to the truth. We're going into the operation. I feel like I'm not going to because I know it's better at school. So it makes us people. We can choose. <laughs> this would make us human, not this. This would make us animals. Mm -hmm. But we've lost this idea. Um, and people are arguing, so when the robots reason, the AI reasons, we feel. But just do AIs reason? No. Mm -hmm. AIs follow programs. Mm -hmm. They don't reason. Um. I think things you do is to help us. Not helping these people. Well, there is, fortunately, we have someone who can. By ourselves, we can. Um, is, but sometimes you have to start with letting them feel loved. Then when you care about them, so they can listen to your reason and perhaps understand what they might want. Um, but yes, if, if someone's not going to listen to someone, if you to help, so I mean, nobody is going to be able to help on his own world. But what about what culture And what about what someone believes? If someone doesn't want to be helped, they're not going to be helped. Right. I mean, what matters if, if, if we live in a culture where everybody had the doctrine of philosophy and the mass every day, if someone still decided not to be helped, they're not going to be helped. The way you feel can destroy your whole existence, though. Like, and I think people get trapped there. I did for a long time. Like, And some people yeah. don't know how to get out of that. Like, it's, you put yourself in a box. No, it's, it certainly can't. Um, and so you want to get back to a place where more and more it's will to happen. Where it's God, reason, my will. The emotions, if they're well trained, then join in. So we rejoice in what's good and we reject what's bad. Um, and in God's plan originally it would have been a lot easier if they would have worked together. You know, doing the right thing would have been easy. They would have done it. And doing the wrong thing would have, been, would have, been, would have not done it. Unfortunately, now, very often, too often, it feels good to get all that. It's part of original sin. That there is a broken inside of us, where, where sin becomes very easy, very tempting. Not uh, just from the outside, but from the inside. Where I want to be angry, more tempted from eat too much, go to mind. And so what John Paul II is doing here is very carefully teasing out, out, out these problems. And he's writing 30 years ago. So they won't know what that But the people are, are trying now to deny these things. We have people in the church saying, this, this letter by the Pope is a mistake. It is wrong. And then we ignore it. Nobody knows. 
I tried some stuff just to sit in the last day or two of it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's like pre submission. So, I mean, it's all the way out. It's, yeah. It would be great. It would be great if the caller from Matt you were immune from sin. <laughs> or, or from stupidity. <laughs> we don't expect Well, and I think you go back to the beginning and you look at the original 12 priests and bishops. That's true. You know, and the Lord chose people who, for the most part, went well, but when it came to push them to shove, all 12 left from the garden. One came back right away. Other time came back later. Yeah. Is that one? Is that one? Left until old age. John? Yeah. Um, or was it because he had to take care of Mary? <laughs> Not the <laughs> reason you got business. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a couple of reasons. Um, <laughs> one of them was that they witness to Christ. The first generation wasn't in Spanish. The other ones were the older than he was. Um, so he was, was younger. He was the youngest. He was the youngest. Just from about 18 years old. But everybody else was marked, right or no? Um, yeah. Everybody else was marked. Except, yes. Yeah, he's the only one who, who died. They, they attempted to kill him, but he didn't die for him. Yeah. 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 The, the other is all marked. He was one of the three that saw the transfiguration. Yeah. All the transfigurations out of the garden, fell asleep in the garden. <laughs> but he stayed with him. But stayed with the end. Yeah. Um, in the garden, but he came back right away. Everyone wants to come back to the resurrection. But, but that's where we began. And, you know, we, we began the church with the priests and bishops, among the 12 first priests and bishops. 100% left, at least for a short time. Um, was that 15% of the 12? The 15% of the percent betrayed Christ completely. 50% of the know. Uh, no, 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 no. Way that Christ has shown 
that maybe Peter didn't uh, think about it later on on the show. Fine. But maybe my personal understanding has deepened over time where I can better more clearly what Christ is saying. So I can deepen what Christ, my, my understanding of what Christ is sort of said. I can use better expressions to explain it. But I can't change it. It might grow and develop, um, as the saints say, an oak to an oak tree. It's still the same plant. If it becomes an apple tree or a pear tree, it's not the same plant. It seems pretty easy for the church to get, to turn around in the way they teach the people. All it takes is to get people in the schools for the priests teaching and encouraging them the wrong way, and then they go out and do it to us. And that's what they've done with the public school system in America for the kids. But I can see that happening in the church, too. Well, and in certain areas, certain, certain places, they have that. Yeah. Um, so in other words, sure. But this is what, why we go back to, was this talk? Um, St. John Newman says, to become steep in history is a CC process. If you, if you know what the truth is, go history, and if you can go back and we'll start, you won't be able to. And unfortunately, these days, a lot of kind of uh, there, there was a convert or a priest who said, when I became Luther, when I converted from a Lutheran to Catholic, it was to my core right discover all the Catholic and they were all Lutherans. <laughs> So the way they looked at rather than looked at some of these things well that he, he found out different and taught differently um, by the church. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yes, um, there has been a great deal of confusion and, and misinformation. So go back to the study, back and look at what was always been taught. That's always been. Um, and after a while, you, you gotta figure out certain authors are gonna be pretty good, or certain publishing companies are pretty good, or certain but can can these days just trust I mean, a company? No, of course you're not. Um, but can you be back and say prior to sticker dates probably be okay? Probably. Um, can you bring it back and say this this this, this company company generally has good things? Generally, yes. I mean, so there are for this author generally says what was good, sure. Because um, you can come back and prove that they report faithful with these things. And also, what's beautiful about our faith it is wall is so deep. Case in point. It's also very simple. I mean, so, so yes, where things tend to be really confused and, and, and confusing is when it comes to the high thing What? The, the, the big ideas, the complicated ideas, where people will say, well, these were like paralysis and uh, <laughs> other things. But when it comes to the nitty gritty. God became man. God died to save you. Do the right thing. Faithful to your marriages. The board of concept. Those things are hard to hide. Those are, those are hard to say. This is always been taught in the Roman. Um, but people argue as well, we know that now. Well, that's changed now. But then that's denying these things. Um, you can't. You're in a tradition, you're going to get rid of the Gospels. If you're going to get rid of a tradition, you're going to the Gospels. If you're the Gospels, you're going to Christ. If you're going to Christ, what will you follow? Lack of formation, lack of history. I just so 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 the number of things. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. You have, you, have, you have the answer of malice, which is people want to control their power or something themselves. You have the answer of intention, where people confuse themselves, or people are afraid of being mean, or people are afraid of saying no, or for people. Um, in my opinion, I think the, the, the bigger problem of the church isn't necessarily the wrong or the right thing. I think people are afraid to say the right thing. 
which is, a, which is a, this is a bigger problem, but a different problem. Right. Um, so when Father McGillicuddy says to you know, Susie that oh, go ahead and divorce your husband because you know he's mean to you and you need to bring on that. Jennifer was not thinking to himself, I'm rejecting the Catholic faith doctrine of marriage. I was thinking to himself, this poor woman is trapped, trying to help her and do, see what we can do and all this. Dump this question to somebody else and they'll figure it out. And so, and so it's, it's done out of a desire to be nice, to be kind, to be helpful. But I realized that you just deny the doctrine of marriage and the doctrine of, you just deny Christ's accountability. Um, so I, I, I don't think it, there is usually this malicious attempt to deny things to trick people or fool people. I think often it's a misplaced desire to be nice to be kind. Going back to we have to love our neighbor. Right? Love our neighbor, everything else is fine. Why are you killing himself? You know, how do you say? Are you just you know, It's killing me not to say things. You know, and, 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 and so just keep coming up and coming up, and everybody just looks at each other like this, and nobody says it. And the person that does, and people, oh yes, oh, yes. oh okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you have to ask yourself: Is where will I do the most good? Um, are you going to do more good by saying something or being quiet? No, the pet. Unfortunately, I don't think always. So I'll always want to ask. If you're, if you're ever asked your opinion, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yes, we need to be Probably because they know your opinion. Probably, yeah, it's true. So if, if, you, if you have authority over somebody, if you are asked for the truth, or if you believe it's going to do good, then you speak up. But who do you have authority over? Your children, your spouse, um, as a pastor, I don't want to parish. Um, two family members, yeah. Um, Godmother, yeah. Yeah, uh, especially. Big responsibility for that. But it is hard because people have to form the opposite ideas. And so all they're going to hear is. You're being mean. You like me? You think I'm bad? And so the tricky thing for only to know when to say things, but how to say them. And when you communicate as best you can is I'm saying this because I love, not because I don't. And so I'm always going to love you. Always, you always care about you because of that. I believe this is harder. I mean. Forget even the strength of morality we live in these days. Someone's out of hope. Even our culture, crazy as it is, knows that alcohol is a certain point of bad thing. And people will say interventions. But what happens to say intervention? At that moment, they don't think you're being kind. The person who sits down At that moment, they'll think you're being all kind to of them. They think they're all being jerks, they'll hate me, they're all wrong. I'm not going to see that big deal. And part of that love is, being, is, is knowing I have to do this for their sake. They can hear me at this point someday, they will. But they're just, you can't just say it and then maybe not think about it. Oh boy, I got something that are like coming up quick and, and I feel like it's dire. But then something else came up and it's just all horribly wrong and everybody's just completely quiet. And so we're just going to watch. Is, the is, there, is there other people in your circle who understand the issues? Or do you have one? So the like question is, is everyone else to be quiet until they know it's wrong? Or is everyone else to think it's okay and just not care? I think they know it's wrong, but nobody wants to say it. So, so what I would maybe suggest then uh, is talking to people who, who are um, being nice at the wrong time or when, and I would see who they both sign a letter or a note. So it's more than one person said. 
where, where it's an expression of love or root on root, by the one individual who believes the one that is they don't have the courage to write them out, but they have the courage to sign them. They don't have the courage to speak them, they have the courage just to say, I agree. But they have the courage to at least to say, I'm willing to let you speak for me. Maybe. Um, but it, it, it's true. It, it, if everyone turns out to speak, no one's going to speak. So I have to start. And that's hard. And sometimes. When you, if you were to say something, your voice in it will give those other people the courage to say, yeah, yeah you know, I've seen this or I've heard that. And yeah, we, we are concerned. There's you know, something more. You just want to communicate it as, I love you and I care about you and that's why I'm saying this. Not, I'm mad at you, I'm going to do this. Right. Even if it's true. <laughs> <laughs> First, I was less worried about getting hurt. No. We live in a very strange, confusing world because of sin. Um, and our job is, first of all, to inform ourselves and know for ourselves way, right? to live that way, like a giving the example. And to, when we can, help surround us understand this way. One thing that, that I would also think is very important, especially when you're dealing with family members, is even though you must speak, don't confuse yourself and think that, that you're the savior, where you can actually change your heart. Mm -hmm. and what that means internally, you have to say, I'm going to do my part, but God's going to take And so you, you rely upon God first and upon your words first. Doesn't mean you don't speak. But it means you say your peace, you let everything go again, and then you're worried about it. You've done the best you can. Yeah, because keeping quiet is like really hurting me. <laughs> you could probably call me quiet, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, how you say things also matters. Right. Uh, because it's tempting to go to someone's side across the face and say, now you're listening. <laughs> Yeah. So someone's acting too open, feeling like too open, and time out and take care of the candy. We get to be 35, we can do it anymore. And there was also a prayer. Oh. Do you want to stop there? No. Uh, do you want to go a little further or stop there? Probably a good spot. Right. Let's close the prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, we entrust your own heart and souls to the heart and soul of those who belong. Please guide them and show them the truth and forgive their hearts and understand and give us the courage to speak the truth that we need to. We all be saying to be for you, Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and never shall be. Glory be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with the Spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.